هتكلم على طبق ممكن يكون برضه استمرارا الحاجات اللي شوية اللي هي understanding common terminologies in biomechanics and biomaterials. This, uh, this lecture aims just to mention some terms uh, and to release some uh, of the confusion about these terms. First, what is biomechanics? Biomechanics is the application of mechanics to biological structures. It is divided into statics, which study forces acting on rigid bodies in equilibrium. And the equilibrium means either stationary structure or structure moving in stationary velocity or stationary speed. And dynamics is the study of rigid bodies in motion. And most of our studies are actually dynamics. This is divided into kinetics, which is study of forces producing these movements. Kinematics, just studying the movement by itself and not discussing how did this movement occur. And the kinesiology is a term applied to uh, human motion. We have two forms of units, either scholar units and vector units. Scholar units only have magnitude only. Length, mass, time, speed, volume, this only magnitude. But they don't have directions. But when, when I have vector units, most of our units are in the form of vector-like forces. Uh, when I say moment, when I say velocity, then I mean there is some direction okay, of this amount and the, of, of uh, these units. And the, 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 the difference between velocity and the speed, that velocity means speed plus direction. So forces, when we know the direction of force, we have also to know the joint around which the force is acting, because the same force, when it acts on the weight, uh, the weight of the forearm uh, in this position, it will produce extension. And the same force of the body weight of the weight of the forearm in this direction will produce flexion of the uh, of the forearm. So forces is represented by an arrow. The, the length of the arrow represents the magnitudes of the force, the head the direction, and the tail is the point of action of the applied force. And uh, according to Newton, every reaction force have, uh, every action force has a reaction force opposite to it and equal in its amount. So when we have a book like this on a table, for this book to be stable, it has a force of, of its weight, and it should have an opposing force from a table that's equal to its weight. Otherwise, if it is more, the, the, the table will break, okay, and it will fall on the ground. So to be stable, there should be an opposing force equal in amount and opposite in direction. And as you see, every force can be analyzed into other two forces. And every two forces, from them, we can create a one summation force, okay? For example, around the hip, if we are standing on a single length, and the, the pelvis is stable. We have a force of a body weight and another force of the abductor muscles that equalize and stabilize the hip. And according to these forces, we can create a summation force that go in between to the center of the hip. And to be able to stand stable on, one, on a single length, there should be uh, an opposing force of the ground reaction force that equals the summation force and the opposing it to, uh, uh, opposed to it in direction. <coughs> the other term is moments. Moment is the effect of force at the particular distance from an axis, which results in rotational movement and angular acceleration. And torque is the magnitude of the moment. And when we have a longer lever arm, we need less force to produce the same action. So the moment equals the force by the lever arm. Increasing the lever arm, increasing the effect of the force. زي بالظبط لما اجي افتح الباب ده، كل ما افتحه من الناحيه الاخرى بزود الليفر ار ما بينه وما بين المفصله، فبفتحه بفورس اقل، تقدر الفورس دي تزيد 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 طول ما انا بقرب المفصله، لحد ما ابقى على المفصله بالظبط، يبقى في الحاله دي الليفر ار يساوي زيرو، مهما ازق على المفصله يبقى مش هتفتح. يبقى ليه؟ لان الفورس بقت في زيرو، يبقى المومنت بقت زيرو. زي بالظبط لما تيجي تفتح مثلا صور لو حبيت تفتحها بايديك صعب قوي لكن لما تفتحها بمفتاح المفتاح كل الموضوع بيديك ليفر ارم ف the moments needed equal the force by the lever arm increasing the force and the lever arm decrease the amount of needed force to produce the action equally if I want to elevate this rock 
uh, uh, when I push from the end of the lever here, I need less force than pushing from the center of the lever. Also, the same action. This is smaller size uh, point with a larger size one, but they are equalized before the lever arm of the smaller one is increased, increased more than the larger one. This diagram is very important because force one, force two, with different lever arms, they recreate a summation force and can be opposed by another force opposite it in direction. Look again at the hip. We have the body weight, we have the abductor <coughs> force, and we have the lever arms of the body weight and the abductor. For example, if the body weight increased, the F1 will increase, so we have to increase the F2 to balance the body. And accordingly, the, the, the summation force will increase on the hip. The same, if we have the action force of the body weight here, and the, for example, for coxavara, there is decrease of the lever arm of the abductors. Then the abductor has to exert extra force to balance the body weight. At that time, the summation force will increase. So any factor, any factor that increase the, the, the summation force will increase the ground reaction force over the hip and will increase the forces acting on the hip. So for this, any increase of the forces, like increase the body weight, any increase on the decrease on the lever arms that leads to increase of the force of the adductor will increase the summation forces and increase the forces acting on the head joint. Another example for the knee. I need less force to extend the knee in presence of the patella. What the action of the patella? Just to increase the, increase the lever arm of the acting force of the uh, extensor muscles. When, I, uh, when there is no patella, the lever arm is more so the, the quadriceps has to exert an extra force to reduce the same action of extension of the knee. The second part is the biomaterials. In this part, I will discuss what's meant by isotropic and isotropic materials, fitness, what's meant by ductility, rigidity, endurance, fatigue, strength, and toughness. When we apply load to any structure, it will produce deformation. Any load will produce deformation. But to describe uh, uh, loading uh, to be for specific material, so I shouldn't use the term load, and I shouldn't use the term deformation, because this load deformation is related to the size of the, stru of the, size of the studied structure or studied material. So we have to replace this with stress and strain. Stress means load, and strain means deformation. But stress is load per unit surface area. And deformation is relative deformation. So it is the change in the length divided by the original length. By using the stress and strain in a state of deformity, uh, loading and deformation, then I can specify characteristic or biomechanical or biomaterials of a material by itself, but not by not a structure. We have two different forms of stress and strain. We have tension, compression, and shear. Usually, when you read the box, you see you read under normal stress, normal strains. Normal stress and normal strains that does not mean a normal amount or amount within the normal limits. No. Normal stress means tension and compression. And the other part is shear stress. Okay? So when you uh, read just normal stresses or normal strain, this means it is either compression or tension. And compression and tension produce linear deformation, increase in length or decrease of the length. And shear stress produce angular deformation within the tissues. But actually, there is no pure form of tension and compression in life. Because if we apply the compression force on this table, for example, the, 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 the convex side will undergo compression, and the, con uh, sorry, the concave side will undergo compression, convex side will undergo tension, and in between there is some shear stresses or shear strain. 